Hey there guys, how are you doing today? So, um, I don't have to go to work for an extra hour. Um, I don't start until two today. So I decided to go ahead and hop on here and uh, get caught up and finally tell you guys what books I have read so far this year and what I still have coming up. So, um, basically I, you know, and I'm not trying to just, you know, toot my own horn or anything, but, um, when I was in school, um, I actually didn't have very good grades in the beginning because, um, I was very bored with school. I just seemed to really catch on easily. And so because I was as good at it as I was, it really didn't have, didn't, it didn't keep my attention. So I didn't really care about my grades in the beginning. Uh, once I realized that I was pretty intelligent when I was in eighth grade, I was already reading at like a sophomore in college uh, book level. Um, and I also never really liked reading textbooks. Whenever I would read them, I would just have to like reread and reread because it would just go fly right out of my brain. Um, I really have to enjoy and be involved in a book for me to really enjoy it and to stay engaged in it. And so, um, I did end up going from like a C student to a straight A student. I think in my call it, or in my high school career, I, uh, ended up with a one B one C and the rest were all A's. So, um, uh, also I would like to state that I don't necessarily, and you're going to say, Oh no, oh my God, this girl doesn't believe in education. No, I don't believe in the college institution. No, I do not. I think that it's set up to, uh, strip you down to, uh, brainwash you into believing a lot of things that are really messed up beliefs. And I feel that they are, uh, taking you and taking your money and taking you for granted when only 50% of people graduate. Um, you know, only 50% of people go on to use a degree. Um, it could take so many decades to pay it off. Uh, so um, the thing is, is the information is out there at the at our fingertips nowadays. You can Google anything. You can look up anything online now, and you can learn how to do anything. Um, also, I don't believe that you know reading the books are giving you any actual experience experience, like physical experience into what you're doing. Uh, a, a perfect example is, um, you know, when I was in my addiction, I absolutely could not stand talking to uh, counselors that were not actual past users. You know, it's one thing to have family members and to want to do the right thing, but I really do feel that in that case, that line, that um, until you've really been through it, you don't really know what it is. So, um, not to say that you can't learn or that, you know, from being exposed to certain things that you don't learn because of course you can, but, um, I think it's always been a big lie. So anyway, let's move on from there because that wasn't even the point. My point of this video is, is that I began reading again this year, uh, in January when we had a big storm and we had no electricity for about a week. Um, in the evening times after I would spend all day prepping the house and doing all the work that we would need to, to prepare for the evening time and to just get through, uh, because we had no electricity. We didn't have a generator. We, uh, the, you know, we didn't have a camp stove. We were literally eating our food that we had that was going, but you know what? I was fine. I was eating yogurt and milk and stuff. And, um, yeah, we lost some stuff, but, uh, you know, God really provided for us. So, uh, it wasn't that big of a deal, but during that time in the evening times, I was reading by candlelight and it just really, really sparked something inside of me. I have always loved my imagination. Like when I am thinking about a storyline, I know that my imagination, anytime I ever seen like a movie that was made off of a book like my imagination was just so much more inventive and uh, the movie really almost like cheapened the experience that it, of my imagination when I would read books so I began reading again uh for my first year my goal is only a book a month and um I'll be starting my eighth book today um I'm sure I'll get it finished by the end of the month so I will literally be right on uh right on where I'm supposed to be. So the first book that I read this year was A Dog's Journey. This is the one that I started. I'm a dog lover. I'm an animal lover. Um, 
and I have a dog myself. I have a double doodle. His name is Jack. He's the love of my life. He's just amazing. I'm such a dog person. This is a book about, um, and it's by W. Bruce Cameron. It's a number one selling author of A Dog's Purpose. By the way, they did make this a movie and it was so terrible. I literally believe in the end and some of the ending scenes when they were like laughing. I literally think it was because they knew what a joke the movie was. Um, so don't watch the movie especially if you uh read this read it first you do just do not watch the movie it was horrible um and like i said it really cheapened the experience it was so bad uh the book itself was really good it was about a dog that kept dying and then it would come back and it, it would have a purpose to be searching for the same person to take care of over and over again and it was just a really beautiful story it made me cry a few times while i was reading it so it's it was good um what would I give this? Uh, so this was a 353 pages. I'm going to give this, okay, out of five stars, I'm going to give this a three. I will do halves, but I don't know if I'm even willing to do quarters, okay? I'll be doing stars and half stars. So I would give this a flat three, full three. If I don't like it at all, I'm going to give it a one. Like if I dis if I like really dislike it like I'm like this is horrible I'm gonna give it a one if I just dislike it I'm gonna give it a two if it was just fine I'm gonna give it a three if it was really good I'll give it a four and if it was fantastic I will give it a five the next book I read was with the kid so the next book that I read was called Siren Sisters and I read this to my nieces so my great niece I read this with her I read this to her um in like February or March. I think that, I think it was March, um, because there were a couple months where I didn't read anything. Um, I do know that. Also, I pick up, picked up all of these books pretty much from, well, not all of them. Um, most of them from the Dollar Tree. Uh, I don't know if you've ever looked, but they have a lot of hardbacks. They get them from Walmart and Target. And, um, not only that, if you're getting like hard back so you can just turn around I'll take them to the after I read them if I do not want to add it to my collection at home then I will just resell it to the uh the family bookstore here in town so and uh so I, I love getting them at the Dollar Tree because you get your hardbacks for buck 25 and you cannot beat that so read this with the kid this was uh I am going to give this a two and a half it wasn't well you know what it's a kid's book. I'm going to give it a, yeah, I'm going to give it a two and a half. It wasn't that good. It was great. It was fine for a kid. I'd give it a three, three and a half for a kid. But for me, myself, it was definitely like a two and a half. The, the story was very simplistic. It was very basic. And it really wasn't even that interesting. Honestly, I can't even really remember what the whole plot was at this moment. I know that uh, they were these sirens. Um, so they were mermaids and... Um, See, I can't even remember what the point was anymore. Um, yeah, I, I literally don't even remember, and it was only a couple months ago that I read this, so I can't even remember. Let's see, does it say anything? Um, okay, so Laura Lee Saul lives with her three sisters in the small coastal town of Starbridge Cove, Maine. The four girls have come to rely on each other for almost everything, and that's just as well because the Salt sisters are hiding a secret, a big secret, their sirens. Almost every night they walk to the cliffs or down the shore and begin to sing lure ships, everything from travelers to cargo trawlers to cargo ships to their doom. For now, all Lolly has to do is watch, but when she turns 13, she'll be a siren too. With her birthday coming up fast, she's desperate to find a way to break the curse. But then one night, a group of fishermen lure her sisters into nets and capture them. Now Lolly will have to find a way to save them, even if it means becoming a siren. That's right. So uh, they were luring people and killing them, and then they uh, were all trapped, and then she had to rescue her sisters. Like I said, I can't even remember that. I can't even remember how it turned out. So, two and a half. Like I said, it's a kid's book too, so it's young adult, I think. Um, then I read The Peacock Detectives. I also read this with the kid. This one, now actually, um, we haven't finished this one. We're on page 157, so we're about halfway done with it. But um, we got pretty bored even ourselves this summer. And I think even she didn't want to finish it. So this is kind of a DNF at this point. Um, I will probably finish it just, you know, um, and what I'll do a lot of times if I'm not 
really enjoying a book is I'll just like skim the rest of the way through it. Um, I generally like to finish a book if I started. I remember I went through like 175 pages of one book and then I didn't finish it. And then I went through another like 100 pages of another book. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to push myself to finish this one. And I ended up at the last 200 pages skimming through it. So did not end up very happy. The second book that I had read was by Adrian McKinty. Oh, sorry, guys. I didn't even tell you the authors of these two. The author of The Peacock Detectives was Carly Nugent, and uh, The Siren Sisters is uh, Dana Langer. Do, oh, and this one, I'll give a three. <clears throat> Just such a simplistic story. So this one was about a girl, a uh, young girl that was going around, and uh, the neighbors, the, the uh, seniors, they had lost their uh, peacocks, and she was going to try to find them and track them down. Like I said, I DNF'd it, so I'll probably skim the rest of the way through it. Um, then I read by Adrian McKinty. This was probably the best book I've read so far this year, and it was called The Chain. The plot of this one was a woman that all of a sudden her child was kidnapped, and she was contacted and told that she, if she wanted her daughter back, that she was going to have to then kidnap another child or person and... Um, Basically, you would become a part of this chain where it would not be, it would never end and people would go and kidnap other people and um, then get a ransom and it would just be this chain that would continue so that it could never be broken. Anyway, this woman and this guy um, that is like, I think it's her husband's or her, it was her boyfriend's uh, brother and um, the two of them kind of link up to get her daughter back and end the chain. That's all I'm going to say about it. This book, I am going to give a uh, five out of five. I really enjoyed it. It kept my attention. And um, I read this one within a couple of days. It just, I did not want to put it down. And when you don't want to put a book down, that goes to show it's a good book. So I'm going to give the chain a five out of five. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this one has also made it to uh, staying in my collection. I'm not, I don't want to get rid of this one. I'm going to keep it. Um, these can all go out of my collection. I'll probably sell all these. Next, um, I was really let down. Um, the next thing that was a trilogy, and it's called the Ruinous Love Trilogy, and this was by Bryn Weaver. Um, I read Butcher and Blackbird and Leather and Lark. Um, this one, I guess, came out last year. This one came out in June of this year, and the third one is going to be coming out uh, next year. These I did purchase at Target for 20% off, so I paid around $15 a piece for these. Um, they're normally $19 and $18. So let's start with uh, Butcher and Blackbird. I was, now I want to warn anybody. Um, so, first of all, I am a Christian. I used to be a Democrat, I used to be very left wing. Um, over the last nine years, I have completely switched, and now I am a Republican, and I'm actually quite conservative. This book is just completely inappropriate. I understand the freedom of speech and the freedom to write whatever you want, but this was not done with any sort of class or real intelligence. It's just some filth, to be completely honest. When I was reading it, this one really kept my attention, and I was interested in reading it. However, I was reading this at work, and then I would get to the point where there would be a sex scene, and it was just so absolutely like, inappropriate. Like, the things, like, I just felt that this really promoted, like, really dirty, nasty, like, kinky things, and um, the language in the book... Um, I, I was not impressed. I actually ended up skipping the sex scenes in this one. I didn't even want to uh, take that in. And the last 200 pages of this book was very difficult to keep my attention. I was really let down and shame on you, Bryn Weaver. You should, uh, your book should be put on the ban list. I'm sorry. Um, I was at first going to give this a five. And honestly, these books deserve a two out of five. They're inappropriate, they're disgusting, and I think that they encourage nasty things that are disgusting. I uh, will probably burn these. I don't want anyone else reading them. That's how I feel. Straight up. 
Next, I am going to add two books because I'm not sure which I want to start with. Now, like I said, I will just go into the Dollar Tree and I will, you know, do some quick reading on the back. And I noticed I didn't read this one all the way down the back. And it looks like, a, you know, it sounded really interesting at first. So this is called Cape May by Chip Cheek. And then um, I had was reading the beginning of this one. It's about a couple. They're on their honeymoon in Cape May, New Jersey. They're there in the off season. Um, before they end up leaving, they end up meeting this really nice couple. It's like lives next door. And then all of a sudden it looks like they discover new truths in each other and in their marriage. And it becomes uh, the empty beach town becomes their playground as they sneak into the vacant summer homes, walk naked under the stars, make love and drink an enormous amount of gin. Um, it sounds like some more uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, if you ask me. I don't know if I'll be able to read this one. I wish I had finished reading it while I was at the store. Um, and then the other one that I am bringing today, um, this is probably the one that I will be reading. Um, it's called The Reign of the King Fisher by T.J. Martinson. And this one is The King Fisher, a mysterious Chicago vigilante in the 80s, was known to some as a bulletproof crime-fighting superhero, to others a villainous, violent uh, avenger. Um, they're saying that he died, um, but the crime starts to uh, blossom again in the city. Now there's another masked killer and um, with rooms full of hostages, and are they thinking, did King Fisher not actually die? Uh, so now there's a retired journalist is going to be, uh, she's like a female hacker. She's going to team up with a police officer. They're going to become unlikely allies and they're going to race to rescue the victims. And they're also trying to discover the truth in the process. So that's what this is about. Um, this one goes for $17.99. Again, I picked it up for a buck 25. I'm pretty stoked to read this one, honestly. This, um... You know, they really got me by the cover. I loved the old, like, look and everything. And I thought this was going to be a little bit more respectable. And like I said, I obviously did not even read this very last line here. Because it says seductive and moving. This is a novel about marriage, love, and raw sexuality. And the ways in which desire can revertebrate endlessly through our lives. So um, am I being, like, a little whiner about that? No, I just don't think that we should open our minds up to things that are not good for us. I think that that's how you start to uh, get bad beliefs. And you start to live by bad ethics and morals. So that's why I, um, you know, but hey, I can read it and I can say don't read it. I can skip through certain things. So that's, uh, I, and I also have about 20 books down here, um, uh, right next to the side of my bed. My other bookshelf is completely packed, stacked full. And, um, so I'm literally using all along the side of my bed. I've got about 20 or 30 books lined up there. So that is, uh, the plan. Those are the seven books that, Oh, another book that I read. The Cabinet of Curiosities. Uh, it was written by two gentlemen. This one I actually left at work. Uh, it was another DNF. I actually ended up skimming through the last 200 pages. It was a 600-page book. The first 100 pages were very difficult to get into, but like I'd said, I had already DNF'd the book right before that, and I had read 200 pages of it, so I held on through Cabinet of Curiosities. It was so incredibly slow and boring. I could tell that uh, one of the authors that was writing, I obviously liked his style much better because I it would literally go from very good like sections of the book that were very good and other parts were just so dang boring and um I did not enjoy Cabinet of Curiosities I really loved the idea of the storyline it was about um some journalists and some people that were working in the New York Museum and basically it was about a man that these uh murders started happening again where uh this person had already where these murders had been happening back in like the 19th the early 18th century or whenever it was. And uh, all of a sudden the murder started happening again. And it turns out that they think the guy isn't dead. Kind of similar to that little vigilante. Um, it was kind of cool because it was in like the catacombs under the, uh, under the top ground of New York city. So it was kind of in like the catacombs of this, uh, of the, New York museum. And that part of it was really kind of cool. And I was excited to see what they were going to find in through there. But the story really was just, kind of stupid and I pretty much DNF'd uh did not finish like I just skimmed the last 200 pages it, it, and I am not a person that likes to DNF and I literally DNF'd two books and this one like I said I'll skim through to finish this but that's it so like I said these will be sold 
this will actually add to the collection. The Cabinet of Curiosities, I left at work because that's where I got it from. So I left it there since it wasn't mine. And like I said, these two, I'm probably going to burn because I don't think that they deserve to be read by anyone. Um, I know I could sell these two for like good money because they're brand new. But the point is, is that I don't want other people reading them. And that's how I come to my decision. Um, so we will do like maybe after the next time I go and pick up some more books, I'll go through and we'll do a um, thing with my books and see what we still have. All right, you guys have a good day. I, if you like to read, I hope that this was helpful. Have a good one.